Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in a little town called Oviedo, and it's outside the uh, city limits of Orlando, a little bit ways out uh, along the I-4 corridor where most people live. What we're doing is we're going to be installing channel drain. You can see the pool here. And a typical problem that we see all the time is that this micro channel drain is installed directly up against the foundation or the slab. Happens to be a lanai here, but regardless of, and of course you can see how dirty and filled up with dirt it is, it's not working. And what she's requested is that we put in this NDS 5 inch channel drain, which is a much larger channel drain to put down through here. So what we have to do is we take our, our concrete saw and we're going to make a cut all the way down across. This is about 35 feet all the way to the end of this uh, patio. And then we go underground. It'll line will come across, it'll turn, and you can see we're putting in a sump basin here that's going to lift that water up and send it all the way out to the street. In addition, we're going to go ahead and uh, put in some French drains along this side because you can kind of see from the grade this water just sits here from both homes. It floods pretty badly. <coughs> Excuse me, during the hurricane she had a real flood, came inside the house uh, through this area back here, and that's what prompted you know doing all this work. So in addition to that, so in addition to taking this, removing this concrete and putting the channel drain in, you can see we've got our jackhammer ready. That's going to discharge, the channel drain will discharge this direction and come across. We're going to put another sump basin over here on this side of the house because this area floods tremendously as well. So she wants to pick the water up, we'll bring a French drain back and over to the sump basin and then the inch and a half pipe is going to lift that water up. We'll use the same trench and come right down through and discharge out there by the sidewalk. So let's get started. Okay, concrete saw made us a nice clean cut all the way from this side of the pool patio. And you can see the cut all the way across. Don't worry if you're not perfectly straight because you're putting concrete back and then you're gonna refinish the deck. But it should look really good. We've got plenty of room to install the five inch NDS channel drain. Notice that we did run water to help keep that dust down because we're working beside the pool. We keep it down anyways, but try to keep it out of your pool. So next we're going to go ahead and remove this concrete. We should be able to do that with the pry bar. And I think the pry bar is a lot easier than a jackhammer, only because the jackhammer weighs 70 pounds <laughs> and you've got to pick it up and move it. Granted, it can cut, break the concrete, but so can the pry and bar. Just to show you how quickly this can get done, you know, it took me, what, 12 minutes to cut that concrete. Chuck's already got the pit installed. And you can see the line for the French drain, which is coming back to the pit, not going that way, but back to the pit. Already got quite a bit of this, you know, dug out and ready to install. So you can see just with the pry bar, if you break one foot sections, it cracks right off. We did not need to do another cut, at least not yet, because the micro channel drain serves as a second cut. But we'll see how this goes. Chuck's going to show you again how to break this concrete. Real simple stuff. So with your pry bar, remember it's just like a jackhammer. You can see how quickly that cracks. This is only a three inch pour, which is typical of a patio or a driveway. And then you can lift it up with your pry bar and just get that piece of concrete out and move on to the next section. Real simple. You got some rebar. So just pry up the concrete. Remember not to make them too heavy because you got to carry them away. But usually a one foot section, these are probably about 40 or 50 pounds. That's almost a whole bag of concrete, each section. So a one foot section is plenty. And remember, the jackhammer can break this too, but look how easy that came out with the pry bar. And you don't need to lift that pry bar, which weighs 70 pounds, and move it all around. It does wear you out. 
but to continue this process all the way through your channel put it in your wheelbarrow and then you haul it away wherever you're taking it we're putting it in the trailer if for some reason that concrete doesn't crack keep hitting it in the same place over and over just like the jackhammer and of course if you do have a hammer available you can easily use that if necessary so a couple of barrels of concrete have been removed you can see where we are and remember when you clean out your trench for the channel drain it's not much deeper than this grade it's designed to set inside the concrete so it's not it's only four or five inches thick I'll show you that in a second do not remove that much soil because if you do you're gonna to have to put it back in order to lay your channel drain channel drain it runs level this does have some pitch to it some fall coming this direct so the concrete's filling up the trailer pretty quick we still have soil to remove we got some in there underneath the concrete and this is heavy stuff probably about two more barrels maybe three more barrels of concrete to put up here but when you put your concrete in your trailer or whatever you're putting it in make sure you stack it up you know take care to make it look neat because when you take it out that's going to be when you're tired and you want to make sure you can get it out easily so there's just two more pieces and then we'll wash this off pull out the old channel drain that's in there take that as way as well and like I said we've got a nice clean trench to work with after that we went ahead and explored both ends this side looks good the other side does have some obstacles so we're gonna to have to go around those you will find the same thing when you're installing yourself you can see we've got a sprinkler you know the irrigation comes through there we've also got can you see this power box I figured that'd be really deep but you can see it right here it's actually just underneath of the uh, pavers in fact on top of the ground very shallow for an electrical conduit that's the pool light going over there the really important electric line seems like it should be a little deeper okay so now it's time to set up the sump basin and if, when I looked at it in the in the hole that we dug our inlet lines are, are higher or lower than this nipple so we're going to do it right below the nipple line it up four inch hole saw right through this is this is going to accept one of the lines perhaps the French drain the other is going to accept the channel drain same depth right here we have a 90 degree turn let's put this one in right here perfect so we've got our sump basin got the French drain coming in. We've also got the channel drain coming in. Both lines come into the same, same sump pump. Sump pump's going to lift them up and take them out. Okay, so we're setting up the second uh, sump basin and sump pit, another Zoller M98. Let's review real quick, same thing. You start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter, screws into that port right there. Then we put a small riser on it. We drill a 3 16 inch hole. We put on our check valve, remember, arrows point the direction of flow. They're always going to be pointing the direction of flow. Now we're ready to set the pump down into the pit. Let's take a look over here. We'll set it in there. Remember, this pump's heavy. You can see I've already done some of the plumbing here. We've got the line coming in, which is the easy flow. That's the French drain. It starts way up there. It actually comes back and it comes around and it ties into the sump basin you can see the little nipple coming in now we're going to set the sump pump down in there it's a heavy pump <laughs> so we set this, the pump down in there now we're going to make a measurement from the top of the check bow where we're going to drill through here on the side of the basin where our inch and a half pipe is going to discharge in the same trench as our French drain okay so made the measurement made a mark I'm going to use my two inch hole saw <laughs> use my two inch hole saw and we're going to drill a hole right through here remember that the two inch hole saw is the exact outer diameter of our inch and a half 
PVC. You can see it slides perfectly inside. So we're right into the pit. Everything will be underground. So you can see the setup. One more time review. <laughs> Just love reviewing. Uh, we've got the sump basin, the sump pit. You can see it's down in the ground. It goes down two feet. We're bringing in from that side. We're going to pick up that downspout, but it also picks up that channel drain. We're draining that channel drain both directions. We just haven't trenched across yet, but there'll be a line that comes from this side of the channel drain around into the sump basin. Then you can see we've got the catch basin and the French drain. Although we're using Easy Flow, that's actually starting there by the beginning of the fence. It runs back this direction and ties into the sump basin. And then we've got our sump pump. And the sump pump is the heart of the operation. This is a Zoller M98, half horsepower. It's gonna push at least 60 gallons a minute. That's two trash cans full of water every minute. Very quick. Um, lift it up, goes through the check valve, through the inch and a half pipe. We use the same trench, save some labor. Same trench to you know, put our inch and a half in as the French drain until we get to the end and then of course it's all by itself. So somebody had put the ground wire right through the channel drain, the old micro channel drain, which is a good idea, you know, it keeps it out of the way, but you know, it'd be better if they had just put it under the channel drain um, <laughs> rather than leave it through there. It's difficult to get it out. So we're pulling that loose and then we'll be able to start to set our channel drain. Yep. And again, you can see, looking at the channel drain, just how full of mud they become if you don't maintain the drain. It's just full, there's no way to okay, clean it. Okay, setting up your NDS five inch channel drain. Remember that she wanted a larger drain for this pool because this is all sloped from the pool back to that lanai that patio screened in area and it just floods terribly so we're putting a larger channel drain much larger but lay out your channel drain across your section and then we're going to go ahead and set that in we've got to get the right depth so i went ahead and scraped it just a little bit we're going to be low so that we can backfill underneath of it and we'll get the perfect depth so this will drain directly into the drain and it'll slope from the patio back into the drain as well Okay, so we're almost ready to lay this uh, channel drain. Notice that we put some blue painter's tape over top of the grate because we don't really want to get the concrete down in there. When we're all done, or the homeowner, either one, they can just rip that off and they should have a nice clean finish. So we've got this all stretched out and we could come all the way to the end, but I like to make a finished look. So this will be concrete and you can see it drops into the pipe. We'll do that on both ends. I always tape this make it watertight and that way we've got a good connection we're just about ready to lay that drain we'll clean this a uh, little bit of patio off and you can see it's coming over same thing on this end remember I taped the fitting as it comes in just to be watertight also secured that with screws by the way set screws line comes around picks up the downspout and goes into the sump basin. So setting this long of a channel drain does take some time and a little bit of work. Um, but if you got a good bunch of guys to help you or one more guy to help you mix your concrete, it goes real quick. Basically, we're just packing it in. Come on, Joe. We're just packing it in and finishing it off, trying to keep a good raise from the house back to the trench. So we've got a real good pour going on here we can see our channel drain and it may look a little sloppy because we got the tape there but you know once we pull that tape off it's just a nice clean grate all the way down what we're trying to do is keep it high towards the house so there's a pretty good sized mound because this pool if you can see the slope of that deck of the pool holy cow when it rains it just poured right through here and into that porch so the little micro channel drain which you saw was all clogged up it didn't do anything <laughs> so we put a much larger channel drain in at her request and uh, this should take this water away you know through major events um, of course a hurricane you can't ever tell you can get 20 inches of rain and of course it's not going to keep up with that but average rainfall is maybe two inches it should handle it really well so when you got your trowel the idea is to just you know make your mix 
fairly dry actually, but you can see what, how you do it. You hit that trowel down in there and that'll bring the cement right up to the top. And that's how you get your finish. You can always add a little bit more and just smack it, pound it down in, and then come back with your trowel and you make a real nice smooth finish. As you look down the trench, it should look pretty good. So if you've got a couple of guys to help you, you can see one guy can mix, the other guy can be the finisher. One guy mixes it, he puts it in the trench. Be sure that you pile it kind of high. Don't, don't spread it low because when you pull it back, you end up with dirt in there, if, if that makes sense. Keep it kind of high on your little piles and you'll be able to finish that right out. So you can see our channel drain. And again, all you need to do is let that cure and then pull off that tape and you'll have a nice finished um, grate across the top. We're just coming to the very end here. Chuck's just finishing it out, making it look really good. It's gonna come out really nice. So out here where we're discharging, we're going to use a 3 inch 90, which is thin wall. So we've got to adapt from schedule 40 to thin wall. We use this little donut and this adapts directly to it. Real simple. Go ahead and glue up your fitting. We'll get it on the inside of this one as well. A lot of glue in there. And then the donut just slides on. Twist it a little bit. Let it set up. Then we're gonna glue this fitting. We'll do that right now. Good amount of glue. And these two will bond. They kind of make a mechanical bond, but it'll be plenty tight enough. Nice and straight. Then we'll put our grate on the top and we're gonna to put a screw in right here, a set screw just to hold that, because you can see it's kind of loose and that pump is powerful. It's gonna push that right off if you don't secure it. So on your pop-up, on your grate, whether you're using a pop-up or a grate, I would suggest you put a set screw in here because <clears throat> your pump, even a third of a horsepower, is quite powerful. And this, we just don't want this to blow off of there. Just one screw, just enough so that it doesn't pop that right off of there. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Get to put a set screw in your discharge, whether it be a pop up or a grate. Just enough to hold it in place.